Hello and welcome to Football Daily, where today we're counting down 10 clubs descending into chaos during this off-season. 10. Ajax A year ago, Ajax were sitting pretty on top of the Eredivisie. They'd just won a third title in four years, the fourth would have gone to them too if not for Covid, and over that period they'd averaged 2.5 points and three goals scored a game, while lifting six trophies and developing a raft of stars. Even a PSV led by Roger Schmidt had been powerless to stop them. But too much success can attract vultures. Martinez, Gravenberg, Anthony and Haller all left for hefty fees, while Andre Onana and Nusa Mazraoui went for nothing. And with Ten Hag gone as well, Ajax put up their worst points tally since 2009, finishing third and closer to sixth than top. Signings like Calvin Bassi and Florian Grilich did not adapt smoothly, the latter leaving this summer after just a year in Amsterdam, and they've already sacked two coaches post Ten Hag, subsequently taking a gamble on Sparta Rotterdam boss Morris Steyn. This transfer window promises fresh turbulence. Jurian Timber, Edson Alvarez and Mohamed Kudus are all linked with departures, and while that will bolster the coffers, the playing style now needs a reset, only 12 months after one of their most successful managers said his goodbyes. The unthinkable has become the inescapable. 9. Napoli Napoli fans had to wait 33 years to win their third Scudetto, but if they expected it to permanently change the future of the club, the aftermath of their last title, when they dropped from 1st to 8th, leading to Maradona's departure, should have been a warning. The Partenopei looks set to keep Kvaratskhelia, but Kim Min Jai seems Bayern bound, while the previous hard line on Victor Osimen is wavering too, with chairman Aurelio Di Laurentiis admitting, if an offer came in that I could not refuse for the good of Napoli, then we would consider it. But worst of all is the downgrade already sitting on the bench. Luciano Spalletti did the impossible, delivering the championship with five weeks to spare, his 90-point tally entering the top 10 Serie A seasons ever. But his exit saw the Neapolitan outfit bring in Rudy Garcia, who spent last term coaching in Saudi Arabia. Though Lyon, Roma and Marseille are all on his resume, the Frenchman hasn't done much since winning Ligue 1 with Lille in 2011, his last time finishing higher than third coming with Roma in 2015, and his football far from the beautiful drama of Spalletti ball. It's not disastrous, but Napoli have gone from Serie A favourites to mere contenders. 8. Wolves In recent months, Wolves seem to have got smarter. Last summer, they targeted stats darling Sasha Kalajdzic, only to lose him for the season instantly. And in January, they added exciting prospects in Joao Gomes and Bubakar Traore, plus underrated veterans Pablo Sarabia and Mario Lamina. But despite this, the team is still mired in uncertainty, with coach Hulen Lopetegui already surviving multiple disagreements with the board, and their starting midfield for the last five years, Moutinho and Neves, now both gone. Losing the Portuguese pair would hurt any side, but exacerbating the situation is Mateus Nunes' disappointing showing to date, the 24-year-old spending last year switching between goal-shy winger and midfielder who never gets on the ball. Adama Traore, formerly an asset rated at £50 million, can leave on a free, and 11 of their 27 other players have contracts expiring in the next two years, including Semedo, Podence and Jimenez. They also have to find a use for Gonzalo Guedes, who joined for €33 million Euros in 2022, only to be foisted on Benfica after a miserable half-season. And FFP issues could even force them to sell an asset like Nathan Collins. Given the team ranked dead last in the Prem for goals scored last term with just 31 in 38 games, a quality summer is a necessity, not a luxury. Lopetegui will need to work miracles. 7. Bayern Munich Treble winners just three years ago, Bayern have gone from dominance to irrelevance in record time. They may remain champions of Germany, but they were only handed the 2023 title by a final day disaster class from Borussia Dortmund, and Julian Nagelsmann, long touted as the man to build the next Bavarian dynasty, was instead dumped after two campaigns at the helm, his main legacy being an error-prone defence which conceded more in each of his two seasons than in nine of the ten previous. Their squad planning, formerly the best in the business, has declined to the point that a tiring Sadio Mane and Eric Chupa Motting split striker duties for the club in 22-23, while Cancelo, Zoma and Dali Blint were drafted in as emergency cover. And though Thomas Tuchel is an excellent replacement for Nagelsmann, he couldn't prevent an embarrassing 4-1 aggregate loss to Man City in Europe, while this summer it's become clear how far Bayern have fallen with targets like Declan Rice and Urian Timber reportedly preferring moves to Arsenal. With the fourth oldest squad in Germany, Bayern need to refresh their ranks quickly or risk losing the domestic fear factor. In continental competition, it's already gone. 6. 
Inter Milan. Inter Milan might yet turn this summer around, they've dug themselves out of holes before. But though the Nerazzurri's run to the Champions League final will help their finances, with a €350 million Euro loan repayment to their owner's oak tree due next year, that still leaves them needing to raise funds, not easily done when assets are flying out of the door for nothing. Regular centre-backs Stefan de Frey and Milan Skriniar both leave San Siro on free transfers this off-season, a pair rated at a combined €60 million Euros by Transfermarkt. And while Inter have exciting targets, like Sassuolo's Fratesi and Marcus Turam, who has joined on a Bosman, they can't meet Chelsea's €40 million Euro asking price for top target Lukaku. Stalwarts Edin Dzeko and Marcelo Brozovic are also both off to Turkey and Saudi respectively, and Simone Inzaghi has a fight on his hands to keep Onana, Martinez and Barella, with Newcastle and Manchester United flashing the cash to try and turn the players' heads. With a title and a European final in the last three years, you'd expect the Nerazzurri to be in a better state, and without some home-run signings or a huge financial injection, it seems almost certain to get worse. 5. LA Galaxy The most successful team in MLS history with five MLS Cups, LA Galaxy is still the first American club fans outside the US would think of. But their last title came back in 2014, and where once they attracted icons like David Beckham and Zlatan Ibrahimovic, they now see Lionel Messi joining into Miami, while even their place in their city has been usurped by Los Angeles FC, the reigning MLS champs. Currently second bottom of the league's Western Conference, the club seems certain to miss the playoffs again this term for the fifth time in seven years, and behind the scenes the mess is even larger. President Chris Klein was sacked in May after a disastrous decade-long spell in charge, which saw the team hit with sanctions for financial irregularities and ended with a fan boycott, with the New York Times reporting attendance sank 10% from the previous campaign. And their best players are facing their own difficulties, Javier Hernandez rupturing his ACL and Douglas Costa mired in legal troubles over failing to pay child support in Brazil. The only ray of light for the Galaxy is that they can't get relegated. 4. Sheffield Wednesday It was one of the best stories of last season. Sheffield Wednesday toiled all year to make the League One playoffs, racking up 96 points in the league, only to lose 4-0 to Peterborough in the semi-final first leg, and face another year in the third tier. But inspired by boss Darren Moore, they won the return fixture 5-1, then triumphed on penalties to book a place in the final, where they beat Barnsley in stoppage time at the end of extra time to head back to the championship. So why boss Dej von Chansiri decided to sack Moore is anyone's guess. A hugely popular figure with the Owls, it took him just two years to lead them back to the second division, and a replacement still hasn't been found at the time of writing. But the manager's chair isn't the only problem the club faces. Head of recruitment David Downs also jumped ship to become sporting director at Blackpool, and haphazard squad building has left the roster in dire condition. Local paper The Star reporting that the club currently has just 14 senior players on the books for the coming season. In one of Europe's toughest competitions, lack of preparation for squad and coach could spell the end before the season even begins. It's not what Wednesday, one of the oldest teams in the world, deserve. 3. AC Milan Before we get to the bad stuff, the good news for Milan. Their unexpected run to the Champions League semis earned them €90 million Euros in 22-23, and Juve's points deduction put them back in the competition next season, bringing another financial boost, essentially wiping out their debt while the Bianconeri and Roma owe half a billion combined. But if the finances are back in the black, everything else is still flashing red. The club dropped 16 points from their title-winning campaign in 2022 to scrape fourth spot, and in addition to the reinforcements they already needed, may have replacements to sign too, with Brahim Diaz returning to Madrid after three years in Lombardy and Sandro Tonali, once heralded as the next Pirlo, potentially on his way to Newcastle. Given the Italian is homegrown, just 23, and a lifelong Milan fan, it'll hurt to see him go. And compounding the pain is the departure of Paolo Maldini, sacked from his director role alongside Ricky Massara, in a brutal goodbye to the team which ended an 11-year Scudetto drought. That leaves Milan starting over yet again, and in the most competitive Serie A in years. Get it wrong, and they'll face another era of mediocrity. 2. Eintracht Frankfurt Eintracht Frankfurt shouldn't be on this list. In 2022, they won the Europa League, their first trophy in four years, and only their second this century. And though their continental charge meant they finished 11th in the Bundesliga, the emergence of Jesper Lindstrom, the signing of Rando Colomuani, and the continuing rise of Evan Ndika boded well for the Eagles' future. But it only took 12 months to fall apart. Though Frankfurt rose to 7th in the German rankings, 
Thanks to Kolo Muani's phenomenal 15-goal, 11-assist campaign, it felt like a failure after the club had sat second at the new year, and a 10-match winless streak saw Oliver Glasner agree to leave the club. Ndika and Daichi Kamada, their second-best attacker with 15-goal contributions in league play, both ran down their contracts, depriving Eintracht of a pair who played 5,000 minutes between them in 22-23, and Muani's excellent showing put him in the shop window, attracting interest from Manchester United and Bayern. If he goes, the club will have lost their manager and three best players in three months, giving new coach Dino Topmuller, arriving from Bayern's reserve team, a steep mountain to climb. 1. Paris Saint-Germain PSG have been in need of a reset for a while. Adding star upon star to their ranks failed to get them over the line in the Champions League and prevented them ever reaping the real benefits of hard-pressing coaches like Tuchel and Pochettino. And, after visits to a European final and semi, they've returned to being round of 16 fodder, exiting lamely to Bayern in 2023, while their 85-point haul in Ligue 1 was one of their worst totals under Qatari ownership, and the second lowest of Leo Messi's career. Still, the team is falling apart in stunning fashion this summer. Messi is gone, Ramos is gone, they're trying to offload Neymar, and Verratti is a target for Saudi teams while Kylian Mbappe is down to a year on his deal again, leaving the side stuck between losing their superstar for free in 2024 or entering next season with Hugo Ekitike leading the line. Their managerial search too is a mess, missing out on Nagelsmann, Conte and Zidane, and now turning their attentions to Luis Enrique, a worrying situation given they beat Lens to the title in June by a single point. In the long run, it might be for the best. PSG have never been loved in France, and new pathways for academy grads could help build an identity for the team. But what it means for next season, your guess is as good as ours. So those are 10 clubs falling to pieces this summer, but what did you think of our list and who would you have included? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a like and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and you'll never miss an upload. We'll see you next time.